try this at home. This is for professionals only. We were given the task of uh, doing some planning for the building of this sink crude emission reduction project. And at the time, the original plans called for crawler cranes that were going to do just about all of the work. And uh, it became a very enlightening job to look at the plans that were perceived before we arrived. And then uh, the actual uh, job of getting it done with crawlers became a very, a, a very, very difficult task to look at. We actually located a K10,000 on the internet for sale. It was for sale in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, through a company called Tower Cranes of America. And um, you know, the findings were that we could do 98% of all of our heavy lifts with this this one single crane sitting in a 40-foot square area. Welcome back to the Crawl 10,000 about three years after we put it all together. Here we are back in the base plant Syncrude to dismantle the world's biggest tower crane. Wrap it up, put it back in the box. About a 15 man crew taking it apart as carefully and uh, precisely as we put it up. Equipment down below, assist cranes, support crew. They have an M18000 Manitoba heavy lift crane, main boom and luff combination. An LR 1300 SX boom, Lee Bear, main boom and luff combination again. And uh, LR 1200 Lee Bear, main boom and luff, ready for man basket work. Tip of the crane is still 427 feet, so we need to be able to get up and over the top of that. But we're going to take a few extra pieces off to send them down, but on the whole, everything's the same. Roughly 100 ton load to the ground. And, uh, Get it on the ground and dismantle, take it away. Some of the challenges that we're going to be faced with is the restricted work area that we have. We have a project right now with roughly 1,000 people working on it, and uh, we have to do our job right in the middle of all these people that have been coming back and forth from lunch breaks, coffee breaks, and actually coming from the buses every day. So it's going to be quite a challenge, just number one, to, to control the people. Number two, it's uh, working at such elevations. Uh, with cranes in a live operating refinery also throws a big challenges at us. But uh, we've went out and we've acquired the same group of individuals that actually built the crane. Getting the jibs down from a 320 foot elevation, uh, panel lines, all that kind of stuff. So it really does throw a lot of challenges at us. So guys working out of baskets, uh, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge, but we do know there are a lot of risks involved. And we've uh, spent a lot of time and money and effort and we have uh, really truly professionals that are going to look after that aspect of the job for us. In order to do this, uh, we used a strand jack system, which is a um, hydraulic jacking system utilizing a strand jack uh, cable. A strand cable is a collection of wires which looks, in all intent and purposes, to be cable, but it's more like uh, miniature bars all wound together, uh, creating a tensile strength. We used two 15-ton hydraulically operated strand jacks, anchored, one end anchored fixed to the jib, and the other end anchored to the end of the pendant bars. And as the bars are released, this, uh, this pendant bar sags, and, the, and this connection slides back down the, down the mast. These ones too, at the same time, relax, and this whole assembly leans backwards to about a 35 degree angle. And that creates a, an opening here where the strand jacks uh, maintain contact between the jib and the end of the pendants. Once everything is relaxed and there's no further movement with the pendant bars, that function is stopped and all these pendant bars are removed and taken to the ground. Yes, folks, the first bolt. How do you feel?
feel about removing that first bolt, Chico? Are you excited? What oh, you thinking? yeah, this is really... Uh... Basically, we're, we're removing all the counterweights completely off the tower now, so all we have now is just this section here left. The arm workers will go up there with the spreader bar and pick the counterweights and, and release them off. We'll have a little bit of angle arm to take off the, uh, on the underneath, and we also have a safety bar that goes through the counterweights that we'll have to take apart. Uh, we'll do that through man baskets, and then once we're ready to pull off the counterweights, we'll use each, each uh, spreader bar, hook on one, and we'll secure another nine. So there's 10 on each slab, so what we do is hook the first one and secure the 9, fly that to the ground, hook the ninth one and secure the 8 before we pull off that last piece so nothing can has a chance of falling. Uh, using come alongs to secure them on both sides, we'll have two arm workers on either side of the counterweight and also one on the top to bring the spreader bar in, in place. The inner jib is still one of the critical lifts that we have to do. I'm going to hook a 350 ton on the end take some weight and lift it up so we can release the pennants. We'll put the strand jacks on and release the, the strand jacks and as the pennants will come down they'll sit on some horses that we put up here. We've cut the handrail for all the pennants to fall into. Once they're released and uh, we can disconnect this pennant right here and it'll actually swing back to the tower. We'll hook on to our lifting ears. So once we pick our weight up we can actually release the, uh, the inner ears and uh, there's about seven bolts that are holding on each, each piece. Once they're released, the seven bolts are disconnected. We have two six-ton come-alongs on it to secure it tight. We'll release the, the ears, and then once we get it released, we can undo it with the come-alongs nice and slowly so there are no big movements. started putting the crane together to develop some plans because there was uh, quite a difference to what we're used to dealing with. So we put some contingency plans in place to, uh, in the event that somebody got hurt, uh, we have an idea of what we're doing, preset plans to work from. Uh, because of the height we're not used to working at, we have to... So we came up with some plans, we tested them, when we put it up we did a, a mock of rescue ray from height the jib level at the 330 foot mark. Uh, this time we did uh, an evacuation where uh, we did a, a repel from the 330 foot mark just to see if the systems and the plans we had would actually work and we found out they worked very, very well. Luckily enough we didn't actually have to use any of them in a real scenario because we're working with a group of professionals and uh, but it's good to have plans in place just in case.
Saturday morning we've just brought down the main jib frame. This piece now on the ground will allow us to dismantle all of the tower sections. We can now pick them up, set them on top, bolt them into place temporarily, and dismantle them piece by piece, load them onto a truck, remove them from sight. This is a major milestone for us as it now allows us to dismantle and remove the rest of the tower, another eight sections of tower. To get to this point from the 43 days from the time we pulled the first counterweight off the crane to where we actually lifted this piece off the base.